I think the only hope that we have of phasing down emissions and getting to the middle of the century with a much lower level of fossil fuel emissions, which is what we will have to do if we want young people to have a future, then we're going to have to um, we're going to have to find alternatives, and at this time, uh, nuclear seems to be the best candidate. Fukushima is, of course, extremely unfortunate because it's right at a time when we've really got to move off of fossil fuels for generating electricity, and yet that's going to cause many countries to reassess whether they want to go the nuclear route. I mean, the fact is that we have much safer technologies than that old technology that existed then. And of course they should never have built a plant that was designed to withstand only a three meter tsunami when it's possible to have much bigger ones. Uh, it's easy to avoid that even with that old technology, but with the new technologies they are passively safe in the sense that if there is an anomaly like an earthquake or a tsunami or both, they will just shut down and they don't require power to cool them. But that was not the case with that technology. Once they lost their power, they couldn't cool the reactors. It's useful to show that you can have a lifestyle which produces less carbon, but it doesn't solve the problem. Because if that's all that happens, even if you convince a thousand people or a million people or a billion people to reduce their emissions, what it does is reduce the demand for the fuel, lowers its price, and somebody else will burn it. So as long as fossil fuels are the cheapest energy, then we're going to keep burning them, and we can't solve the problem. There are multiple reasons, I think, why um, there's opposition to nuclear power plants. Nuclear energy is harder for people to understand, the idea of radiation. I mean, radiation is natural. The Earth is bombarded by radiation all the time. So the radiation that was released, for example, in Three Mile Island, the, that exposed the accident at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, exposed uh, residents nearby to radiation, um, which is equivalent to the amount of radiation that you get by flying in, an, in a commercial aircraft across the continent and back. So it's not really that dangerous, but it's mysterious to people. And it's been painted as being very dangerous. And you know it hasn't been compared with the effects that you will get from burning coal, which you know are very substantial and are, are well known. There's not a mystery about them, but it's hard to get um, the public to, uh, to understand and make that scientific comparison. It's, it's, uh, I, I think it's unfortunate that so many environmentalists are just assuming that these renewable energies will be able to satisfy all of our requirements. Renewables are only providing about 1%, between 1 and 2%. The soft renewables, the hydropower provides a significant amount of electricity, but that's limited as to how much of that uh, we can have. And the hope that the wind and the sun and, and geothermal can provide all of our energy is, is a nice, uh, idea, but um, I find it unlikely that, that that's uh, possible. The environmental community is basically asking the governments to try to reduce their emissions and asking them to subsidize clean energies. Well, that simply doesn't work because we don't get enough energy from the renewables to make a difference. and. That then forces any government to approve expanded oil drilling, uh, hydrofracking to get more gas, uh, mountaintop removal to get coal. We're not going to turn the lights out. No government, no president uh, or governor is going to turn out the lights. There has to be energy. Uh, and if renewables aren't providing it, then 
it's been fossil fuels. The scientists that developed nuclear power, they did not expect these light water reactors, which is what we have now and have had for 50 years. These are uh, so-called thermal reactors, which the, the neutrons are slowed down, so um, it's, it's, an, it's an, one way to generate uh, energy from the nuclear fuel, but it uses less than 1% of the energy in the nuclear fuel. There is an alternative in which you let the neutrons move faster, the so-called fast reactors, which can burn more than 99% of the energy in the fuel. And it can, in fact, then leave a waste pile, which is much smaller and which has a half-life measured in decades instead of millennia. So the big problem with uh, the current generation of nuclear reactors is that they have this waste pile that you have to babysit for millennia that can be solved with the next generation of nuclear technology. But the problem was that when the United States uh, scientists got that technology to the point where it was close to being uh, time that they could make a commercial reactor, the program was turned off. Uh, and I think it was because of the influence of the anti-nuclear people who realized that if this newer technology were developed, it would mean that we would have an energy source which is practically inexhaustible. It could last for billions of years. Uh, and uh, they succeeded in getting um, the Clinton administration to terminate the uh, R&D for the fourth generation nuclear power plants. What uh, I find disturbing is the fact that the environmentalists who recognize that we have a problem with fossil fuels, that we are, if we don't find an alternative, we are guaranteeing that our children and grandchildren will suffer consequences. Um, so we should be looking for alternatives to fossil fuels and to uh, turn down uh, the potential of nuclear without looking at it. There's no reason that we, you have to agree. Some countries and some states may decide they can get along without nuclear power. That's fine. But at least we should find out what its potential is. So why shut off the R&D, which was progressing very well? That's extremely uh, irresponsible. And yet it's really forced on the government by the, the strong preferences of a rather small number of people who the strong anti-nuclear people who managed to make a significant fraction of the public believe that uh, nuclear was just unacceptably dangerous. That's a decision which, which should be made after scientific analysis. It sh it's not something that um, you should have Jane Fonda or someone pushing the decision of the nation uh, without objective analysis of what the potential is. We do need authoritative scientific bodies to um, look at and, and discuss the uh, relative merits of different approaches for energy. And the National Academy of Science and the Royal Society in Great Britain have done that and, and issued reports. And, it's generally um, concluded that we do need to continue to push the research and development and move toward uh, even more effective and safer uses of nuclear power. I mean, it's analogous. Yeah, there have been a couple of accidents that were significant over the last 50 years, but it's like airplanes. If you have an airplane crash, that doesn't mean that you decide, well, we're not going to have airplanes anymore. You find, you, you find out what the problem was, and you make the, the next version uh, safer. And it's very clear in the case of nuclear technology that there are approaches that are far superior to the existing light water reactors. And we should be pursuing those because we don't have any other alternatives on the horizon that can come close to competing with that.